The gloomy bears are here. Would you like to get painted, sir? Let's go. Deco Art sent me a set of water marbling acrylic paint that I am going to try today. Wait, water marbling? I was planning on pour painting, oops. Well, I may need to wait on some other supplies. Until then, let's check out the bears. Ducks, you stay there. So cute. Is it a dent in its head and its foot? Do you stand? Oh no. <laughs> I thought you could stand. He has a little dent, but you know, we all have flaws. There are five total, so let's check out your friends. <laughs> oh my, these two have dented heads. But these other two look pretty good. Also, I ordered these cool split cup mixing containers from Amazon. I will try them eventually after I either order or buy some pour paint and do a couple different styles and trials. Also, I'm gonna be using some hot glue and a glue gun. And then I'm gonna use these as a platform. So I have some stars and some circles, but these might be too small, I'm not sure. Or maybe these, these are a little bit longer. Oh, too heavy for one hand. <laughs> Yeah, that's not happening. I hopped on Amazon to find a pour painting set that I like. I found that that was a lot easier than actually going to the store and there's so many options on here. There's a lot that are really affordable, so why not? <laughs> Purchased this one and it arrived to the door in two days, which was wonderful. And I didn't even really need it this quickly because this video isn't going to be out right away, but here it is. All the different colors. I love it, I think. I mean, I hope it works well. We'll find out. Pastel who? This one's definitely neon. And this is also a neon. This yellow is not pastel at all. What is a salm? Salm. Supposed to be salmon. Dark green and regular green look oddly similar. They look exactly the same. Maybe we should do some swatches. You want the paintbrush? Look. Leo. I'm about to swatch. This gets better and better. Do you see this? Nom toxic. That seems so contradictory. Let's eat, but don't eat. swatching is now complete. I wrote all the color names of the paint on there, some in quotation marks because they're not right, but I just want to be able to identify them by what they actually say on the bottle. Off to get gesso. Moving on to the next step, I am going to prep the gloomy bears by sanding the surface just to make sure that the paint sticks well. And then I'm gonna prepare some platforms for them to stand and or sit on. P.S. I am all dressed up because I'm gonna do a little impromptu photo shoot for Instagram. Check me out over there if you wanna see the cute photos that I end up taking. I'm wearing gloves for this so I don't ruin my fresh gel manicure. I spent a long time on that, but we are going to get the surface of this a little bit more rough so I can apply gesso in a little bit. All sanded, I posed the bear to stand on this platform and I am now going to put hot glue on the bottom of the feet and then it'll stand there forever, hopefully. Oh no, that was a little messy there. Leo. The final prep step before we get to pour on the color is gesso. This wood was five cents. I wanna paint a variety of things, so I'm going to apply gesso to these two canvases as well. Mm -hmm. 
This next batch I'm going to gesso includes a pig, a paintbrush, some wood panels, and another gloomy bear. A lot of these are going to be done in multiple steps. As you can see with the pig, I have to hold a part of it in order to cover the rest with gesso. So I will have to let this part dry before covering the tail and legs. Same with the paintbrush. I am going to just have to do the top of it and then let that dry before moving on to the bottom and flipping it over. Then you can see I applied gesso around the edges of the wood panel plaque as well as the round one. And I did that with a smaller brush, then went in with a larger brush to cover more area at once and get it done quicker. But I thought, you know, doing the details around the edges and especially in these grooves here with the panels, um, that was easier with the smaller brush that I used on the pig and the paintbrush handle. I finally am utilizing the little star platform and having a gloomy bear sit on it. I think this is a really cute look and I cannot wait to pour paint on this one. But before we get into any of the bears and the 10 other things, I did 11 pour paint art pieces total in this video. Um, we are going to start with the wood panel plaque and I'm actually going to draw a mandala design on here. So kind of like a flower, if you guys are not familiar, it is a fun doodle and I'm using a Posca paint pen. And by the way, if you do want to purchase any of the items that I'm using in this video, I'm going to link them in the description box below. I have an Amazon affiliate link, so uh, you can check out my Amazon storefront. I would really appreciate anything that you purchase from my Amazon affiliate links because I will end up getting a small percentage of that and you won't have to pay anything extra. So it just helps to support my business and channel so I can keep buying more supplies and upgrade my camera and microphone hopefully in the near future. I get my Posca paint pens from Amazon all the time as well as quite a few of these other supplies but some things are from Michaels. The gloomy bears are from AliExpress I believe so I don't get commission off of those, but I do want to show you where they all are from. After the beautiful mandala doodle is complete, I am now going to do the long-awaited paint pour. And this one's actually a little bit different because I'm going to be dripping it down, you'll see. So I am using a red Solo cup, a uh, not really reusable plastic cup, but I reuse mine. I rinse them out after, use them as many times as I can. It's pretty simple. I just put a bunch of different colors of paint one at a time into a cup and swirled them around a little bit. Then I am propping up the plaque, which was a very dumb idea because I didn't put a very heavy object behind it so it toppled over not great and it already got on the design not off to the greatest of starts however it will be worth the process in the end by the way this is the longest piece in this entire video like the process of it took me quite a few hours. Everything else was so much quicker to make, but this one I really poured my heart and soul into. I did a ton of different colors and steps. I wanted the top panel to be basically covered with the paint and then have it drip down to the second one and have that one covered as well. Getting closer to the actual flower doodle, I wanted there to just be drips kind of randomly throughout it, but I really contemplated whether or not I was going to cover the design and have it just stick out and be the main focal point or have it be covered. So I went back and forth with that idea. You can see I chose to have the paint drip down over it. Immediate regrets. I did not like this decision at all. I don't like the paint drips that went over it. However, the show must go on. So in order to try and save it, I thought, okay, let's do another paint color, maybe one that's a little bit lighter and do that as a drizzle down from the top as well. So in addition to the blue, I ended up with a light teal turquoisey color. And I tried to make this a little bit more of a splattery drip. Uh-huh. So <laughs> this is what it's looking like now. I'm not mad about the color choices. There's not a lot of swirl unless you look really close, but that's okay. So the other thing is I don't like that there's just 
so much solid blue and green on top and there's no white mixed in there so I took some white on my finger here and I'm going to do a splatter paint technique I think this is a lot easier than using like the end of a paintbrush it gets a little bit messy but that's okay at this point it just wasn't doing enough the doodle is way too far consumed you can barely tell that it's a part of the piece it's too covered up my plan now is to redo the entire doodle so the entire zen tangle mandala flower whatever you want to call it i am going to go back over that with white gesso and with black posca paint pen maybe you can relate to this flower times where you feel lost times where you have gone through the most intense struggles that you thought you would never reemerge from that you would never be complete again or never be the same that you were before so you're never going to be completely the same but you can get back to the version of yourself that you truly want to be if you really work at it and you believe that you can be everything that your heart desires that you work toward. I'm never going to forget things that I've went through. However, I can change my perspective, my outlook, and the way that I'm going to live my life and carry myself forward in the months and years to come. So every experience that we have in life will shape us and it will be a part of us. But if you were once broken, you can make a comeback. I think that it actually took longer to redo the image than it did to initially draw the black lines on. There's definitely a lot of imperfections when you look up close. However, from far away, it looks like the same image. And I really resonate with this piece. All right, that's enough of the deep stuff. The rest of this video is just going to be mindless entertainment, fun, colorful, pour paint things. This second piece here is a canvas, as you can see. I believe this is called the dirty flip cup method. Sounds like a drinking game. Leo, are you gonna check out what's going on? Come here. We're gonna set this on top. Ooh. You flip the cup upside down. Well, wait, first you, you flip the canvas upside down. You, you saw what I was doing and the cup is underneath, then you flip everything and then lift the cup and all the paint comes oozing out from underneath. Whoa, that's pretty. Oh my gosh. That would be nice if it just stayed like that. <laughs> I really loved the way the paint looked immediately after lifting the cup. I wish it would have stayed like this, as I said. The instruction guide said to mix the cell magic liquid into the paint and stir it around before doing all this, but I just decided to drip it into the paint on the canvas, which it actually did make some really cool cell effects. However, after this piece dried, I realized that it was really, really greasy, so all the oil raised to the surface and I don't really know if I can get that cleaned off enough to like put a uh, top coat to seal everything in, so I'm not sure. I'm just left with a really greasy piece. And it's not as colorful as I wanted it to be, but when I do look at it up close, there are quite a few different colors and textures. It kind of reminds me of an oil spill in a parking lot, like a car was dripping, or waves by the ocean. Let me know what it reminds you of in the comment section below. silicone split pour paint cup from Amazon is going to make an appearance and finally get put to work. I mean, it already made an appearance, but it's going to star in this pour. This one has five different compartments and I chose five different colors. The two outermost colors take a little bit longer to pour out. So keep that in mind if you do get a cup like this. This is another wood canvas, obviously. Hang tight for the bears, they're coming. I know that is probably the most unique thing about this video, bears instead of just painting on flat things. They're coming, they're coming. It's amazing to see the different effect that this section cup is giving me versus just putting all the paint into one cup and like swirling it. 
this one definitely keeps the colors split apart more and just, I don't know, I really like the swirl and everything that it's doing here. And it was kind of an accident actually that I didn't get the paint over the edge onto the frame of this, but it worked out perfectly because I wanted to paint the border of this a different color anyway. And I did have some paint left over, so after setting this aside to dry, I got the little piggy and I didn't want to cover the pig completely. I kind of wanted it to look like a drizzle down an ice cream cone, I guess. Pretty cute, looking tasty. I wish this was like a peanut butter cup pig candy. That would be very tasty. Or cake pop, oh my gosh. Fast forward to the next day or whenever I painted this, it was completely dry whenever it was. And I used silver metallic acrylic paint to just go all around the border there. No more white. Next I went with this color scheme which is very very similar and I wanted to do the handle of the paintbrush. So something about this pour painting set, all the metallics, once they are dry they don't look shimmery at all. At least I don't see any of the shimmer. So it's really like using white almost. It just kind of dulls the other colors or like blends into them, but it doesn't really stand out on its own, which is weird. I still really like how this turned out though. It kind of reminds me of a night sky, I guess, like a magical one. Again, I had a little bit of paint left over, so the paintbrush is sitting down um, on a cup and it's drying. I decided to take this square of carpet here, a carpet sample, and I was hoping for something much different than what actually happened. <laughs> I was planning to do like all of my leftover paints on here and I wanted the carpet to turn into a hardened canvas type surface, but I guess the polyester based fabric that the carpet is made out of just kind of slurped and sucked in all the paint. It still mainly kept a fluffy texture. So maybe if I cover everything with gesso or a wall paint, it will give me the effect that I want. Uh, but in this video, this is just a complete failure. We're about to do an experiment. <laughs> My last idea for this to try to get the paint to marble on there was to dump it onto a plastic bag and then kind of stamp it, you know, like push it down on there and have the swirl transfer, but no, it did not. <laughs> oh, it doesn't marble. So back to the drawing board with this one, it might appear in a future video. If you have any ideas on like the technique of this, how to make it actually turn into a canvas, let me know. It might just be a dumb idea, but I was having fun. This is one of the 11, but it's the worst. <laughs> and we're just gonna move on to the next and pretend it doesn't exist. This one here is extra exciting because it's neon and it is a gloomy bear. Oh, that looks cool together. Green and yellow are nowhere to be seen. I had to use one of the bears sitting on the star. This just seems like a very magical color scheme. And I don't know, it reminds me of some like cheesy 80s, by the way, I love the 80s, but like some cheesy 80s music video. Um, possibly maybe like the Care Bears, how they are like shooting through the stars on cloud mobiles and everything. Yeah, that. Oh my gosh. I just had a really cool idea to turn a gloomy bear into a Care Bear. I do have one gloomy bear left over. I only did four of them in this video. So yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna do it or not, but uh, leave your feedback, I guess. This is so cool. He says, pour some sugar on me. Watching this paint pour was extremely mesmerizing. All the different colors and the swirls. disappointed that you know while pouring it looks way better than it does when it dries because it doesn't dry as bold and vivid and shiny but uh, maybe later on I will find some sort of top coat or clear varnish that does like bring that pop of life 
back out in it. I would recommend maybe doing multiple pours so you can get the best of the colors everywhere. So much paint dripped down on the star that after it dried, it got really, really dark. I could always go back in and add more later, but I don't think I will. It is kind of cool to have a really dark platform in contrast to the lighter, like more colorful body of the bear. Moving on to the next bear, I do put my idea into practice of covering part of it and then letting it dry and doing more later. This one reminds me of maybe taffy, like saltwater taffy or a candy shop in general, sherbet ice cream definitely. This is the one with the big dent on the head, by the way. You can't really tell if you turn it a certain way, so that's fine. By the way, I learned about gloomy bears over on Jackie's channel. Her and Sika were pore painting and doing a TikTok trend, so I thought it was really cool. I did let it dry for at least a day before adding more paint into the cup, the same exact colors, and I wanted to cover the legs with this and make the platform look a little bit less dull. For the next pair, I'm gonna show you what a huge difference the sectioned cups make in comparison to the red cup method. The head started off really, really pretty. It gave me a lot of hope for the rest of it. I didn't really film much of this, but when pouring on this bear, there's so many different nooks and crannies and I end up flipping the cup down a lot and that just mixes the paint around more than it needs to mix. So it got really blended and I didn't really like that it wasn't very swirly. So this is what it turned out like not as colorful and poor paint like as the others still kind of cool but i might go back in and redo this at another time i do have one more wood panel so for this one i did a warm color scheme and we're back to the sectioned cup because I just like how it works so much better. This one, I guess, kind of reminds me of a gemstone, like a geode, I guess. I had high hopes that the gold might stand out a little bit better than the silver did, but no such luck. It still looks really cool. And here's what it turned out like. I decided for this one to make the frame blend with the rest of it, so I chose the pastel coral color and I'm going to give it a couple coats and then it is done. Finally, we have this bear. I live in Ohio and that is what these colors represent. So he is showing some Buckeye pride. While Mr. Buckeye was drawing, here is the status of everything else. Here he is in all his glory. Like I mentioned, I do have one blank gloomy bear left. I could always get more. Be sure to let me know in the comment section below which piece from this video is your favorite and also what I should paint in the future.